I said, well, praise the Lord. Isaiah 51 and just one verse only. Look at the word of God with me, Isaiah 51 and 1. And the word of God says, hearken to me, ye that follow after righteousness, ye that seek the Lord, look unto the rock whence ye are hung, and to the hole of the pit whence ye are digged. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to give it to you how God gave it to me. 1 John 4 and 20. And the word of God says, if a man say, I love God and hated his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother, whom he had seen, how can he love God whom he had not seen? I stop by to tell you tonight, I've never hated any person in my entire history of my life. I have disliked things, never hated anyone, not even the ones who have wronged me for right. I will come to tell you tonight, hate is a small word for small-minded people. I'm going to say it again. Hate is a small word for small-minded people. I want to say it one more time because it sounds so good. Hate is a small word for small-minded people. God love covers a multitude of sins. Had God not covered your sin before, had God not covered my sin before, what are you saying tonight? I stop by to tell you tonight that I'm going to stay humble, but the title is tonight that we're cut from another cloth. Tell your neighbor on tonight's and neighbor, we're cut from another cloth. Three ways to know that you are cut from another cloth. Because we are leaders and followers being number one. We were born leaders who know, knows how to follow. We are born leaders who know how to follow. What do we follow tonight? We want to follow on the path of righteousness. Isaiah 51 tells me tonight, Hearken to me, ye that follow after righteousness. Ye that seek the Lord, look unto the rock whence ye are hung, and to the hole of the pit whence ye are dig. Do I have any people in the house tonight that want to please God? Do I have anybody in the house tonight that wants to follow your pastor as he's following Christ? Do I have anybody in the audience tonight that's saying, God, I be like David. I mess up sometime, but my mind is right and my heart is right towards the Lord. Tell your neighbor on tonight, we're cut from another cloth. How do we follow after righteousness? The Bible tells us that we follow righteous instructions. And you heard our pastor on this morning telling us that you can't tell a fool nothing. And I done been around some fools that you can't tell them nothing. I had one fool to tell me in my life, princess, they said, whoa, Christ is taking over. No, they, let me back up, Holy Ghost. They said, whoa, the church is taking over. And I stood up and I said, you're right. It ain't about the church taking over. You better let Christ take over. See, it's beyond just a temple. It's beyond just the body of Christ. You better let Christ take over your heart and mind so when you die, you won't lift your eyes up in the pits of hell. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 16, 20 through, 22 through 25 about the righteous instructions. The word of God says, understanding is a wellspring of life unto him that hath it. But the instruction of fools is folly. The heart of the wise teacheth his mouth and added learning to his lips. Pleasant words are as an honeycomb, sweet to the soul and health to the bones. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. When you've been cut from another cloth, you want to follow the commandments of God. You want to follow the statutes of God. You want to follow the word of God. You want to do what's right. See, we weren't brought up being taught about holiness. Holiness has nothing to do with my attire that I have on. Your heart got to be right before the Lord. I come by to tell you tonight, 
Not earrings not gonna make me go to hell. Not braids not gonna make me go to hell. Not long dress not gonna let me in heaven. But your heart gotta be right before the Lord. You gotta be right before God and you gotta know how to treat people right. Don't just treat people any old type of way, but you wanna be treated right, but you treat people any type of way. That's of the devil. That's of the flesh. That's not of the spirit of God. Tell the Lord thank you on tonight. We've been cut from another cloth. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, we've been cut from another cloth, and our fabric is not cheap. Uh, spiritually, you can't even afford us. Hallelujah. You can go to Walmart and stitch a dress, uh, but you can't snatch down in the spirit where we've been cut from because we've been cut from another cloth that's a spiritual cloth by the Lord. Look with me, if you will, in the word of God tonight. We got to know how to bring peace in the midst of confusion. When you've been cut from another cloth, you don't like all that bickering and arguing and fussing and generational curses and back and forth and back and forth spirit. When the man of God or the women of God or the people of God give you an instruction, follow what they ask you to do without going back. They say one word, you got a hundred words. Let me, let me reverse this thing. When I came here 16 years ago, if Pastor Kana said boo, I said boo, boo. But I'm now submitted, and I've been rebuked, and I've learned, and I've grown. Uh, if he say something, and he's saying it of the Lord, receive what thus said the man of God is saying. Close your mouth, because it's not polite to say shut up. But be quiet and close your mouth. Listen and learn. They may be stopping you from an accident ahead. God is not the author of confusion. Can you agree with me on tonight in 1 Corinthians 14 and 33? It says, for God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. You got to be an idiot or a fool that's not saved to want to argue and fuss all the time. Don't you know it ain't no arguing in heaven? There's no battle roar in heaven. God is so good, everything is so peaceful, everything is so lovely, everything is so decent and in order. But when you meet people with bad spirits, you got to get away from them, you got to pray for them. Please don't hang out with them too long. You may go to act and just like them. We don't, we don't want no confusion spirit. We don't want spirits that like the auger. If I say the car was blue, you saw the car go by, it's in the blue family, and you want to correct me because I said the wrong color blue. My God. That is so ignorant to me. The car is blue. It don't matter if it's light or dark. It don't matter if you're right or wrong. It's not about us. It's about the word of God being right. Worry about God's word being right in our lives and not that we're right in the flesh because we're never right in the flesh. We're never right in the flesh. I don't care what it's about. We're never right in the flesh, Brother Walker. If we're in the flesh, when we're telling somebody something, we're never right. If we're coming up with our own decision and our own choices, we're never right. And guess what? It's not going to turn out right when you make a decision in the flesh. I'm going to bring it on home. He said, mention this. Some of us have lied on our income tax. But you didn't lie because you was in the spirit. You lied because you was in your flesh. So the Holy Ghost, he can bring it on home. If you don't get it, you will get it. Romans 12, 18. If it, if it be possible as much as lies in you, live peaceably with all men. As you get older, your circle going to get smaller. See, when we're young, buck wild, 19, 21, 31, we got a big old circle. But when you go to Asian in wisdom in this word and in the gospel, you want to have peace with all men if they allow you to have peace. If they don't, shake the dust off and get on down. We got to know how to bring peace in the midst of confusion. We got to know that we are leaders and followers that were born leaders that know how to follow. And we got to know how to love with the love of the Lord. I love talking about love. Love makes me cry when I think about Jesus. Because God gave up his only begotten son. Look at 1 John 4, 6, and 8 on tonight. The Bible reads, it says, we are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we 
the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. If you're saved on tonight and you got the Holy Spirit tonight, which is a gift from God, the Holy Ghost, and you can speak in tongues, and may, some may not speak in tongues. You didn't get that part. But the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. We're able to tell the difference in life now when it's a spirit of truth versus a spirit of error. The Bible says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth knoweth not know God, for God is love. They used to sing a song that said, he that love it, not know it, not God, for God is love. I don't care what you say, and I don't care what they say. God is love. The men heart, Pastor Kiner, are different from our hearts. I compare a man heart to Pharaoh heart, because their hearts be a little more stiffer than a woman's heart. But how many know that the king holds your heart in his hand, and he can change anybody's heart? It's not that you're better or weaker or worse or good or bad. It's just men are made different from women, Brother Walker. You're not going to feel some of the emotional intimacy things that we're going to feel in the Holy Ghost. Don't mean you can't feel the Holy Ghost and have the Holy Ghost, but you all are made different. Your DNA is different from a woman's DNA. Tell the Lord, thank you on tonight. I told them this morning in Sunday school, God made her a son. He said, you're going to name him Ishmael, a son, not a daughter, not, not bisexual, not homosexual. God don't get confused. Our spirits get confused. Our, I'm going to say it again. Our spirits get attacked in the womb or before it get there or however it see fit to work out. But God allows things to happen in people's lives. The enemy means it for bad. But God has given me revelation to know the difference. You got to show people love, the love of Christ. I'm not saying run with people that are committing abomination. I'm not saying run with fornicators. I'm not saying run with adulterers. I'm not saying run with liars. I'm not saying run with backbiters. I'm not run saying run with backstabbers. I'm not saying run with mean people. But you got to show people love. So he said with loving kindness. Uh, have I drawn thee? Uh, how did God draw you uh, if he didn't use his loving kindness? How did he draw us? We were sinners that are saved by grace through faith. And, 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 and for the grace and mercy of God, God is still working on us. Some have lesser sins than they had last week. Some have lesser sins than they had last year. But God is still working on us because we're cut from another cloud. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, we're cut from another cloud. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I want to testify. This is a testimony. I'm a servant from my mother and father, which is in my biological bloodline. That's my testimony. Some of you all didn't know, but you all know the third part, but two parts of it you didn't know. I have a 90-year-old aunt who was an evangelist until her age and illness kicked in. She's still alive. They got her in the nursing home. I have had a mother-in-law who is an ordained reverend with her PhD in theology. And she calls me her daughter-in-law today, but her son is dead. What are you saying? Because we're cut from another cloth. People still want to be connected and be around you because of what God is putting in our lives and put on us. He said, I've drawn you with loving kindness. And the third part, because you all are here with me, I am the first servant that's ordained as a reverend in my biological bloodline. My mother has three kids. I'm the preacher that's been called out to serve. Sister Ross took me to Breath of Life with her back in the day. When we went home, they said we were drunk. Now, they said I was crazy. They didn't say she was crazy. They say they put something in my, in my drink, Sister Princess, out at Brother Life Christian Center. Well, she took me and I followed her, and God called me out because I'm cut from another cloth. God knows what he's doing, Sister Adam. I went with her. Why wasn't she crazy too? But God called the preacher out to serve, to preach and teach the gospel to the captive, to the blind, to the lame, to those that are depressed, to those that are sad. Can be sad myself, but guess what? Because I'm cut from another cloth, I can have a word from the Lord for you. And for you, and for you, and for you. Anybody on the street can get a word from the Lord. Because I walk by faith and not by sight. 
I'm not moved by stuff no more. I've been moved because I'm human, but I'm not moved by a lot of things that I see. Don't let the devil fool y'all about this stuff. God wants us to be blessed. Nobody in this church that I walk with is putting things before God. They're putting, they're putting God before things. Nobody in this church, Pastor, is putting, you know, material possessions before God. They're putting God before things. Let me tell you why. Because we're not smart enough to think of anything. We're under a pastor that's a king that always tell you how humble he is and how humble he, he don't know anything unless in God let him know. He'll tell you that. We all say the same thing. We're not saying, well, I know A to Z and he don't know but A and B. That's the devil. God wants us to be in unity and in, in humbleness and in love and in holiness, walking the same walk. You don't be a fool for the fools that are out here because there are fools you're going to meet on this journey that are not saved. And some of them saved and don't know nothing but the law. Tell the Lord thank you on tonight. They better study and read and pray. We've been in this thing a long time. We ain't new to this. We grew to this. If you've been in this thing, it ain't based on how long you've been in it. It's based on how long God had called you to be in it. It was before the foundation of the world. So when God allowed you to have a relationship in him and with him, he's not going to cut you off unless you're doing ungodly things. And you're still going to be saved. You're going to be as a backslider, but you don't get saved and get unsaved because you cut from another cloth. The church has taught wrong for so long. Uh, they're going to be mad when they start hearing me even the more in the Holy Ghost because there's going to be some correction, some rebuke, some reproof, and some love and some giving but on top of that we're cut from another cloth you had to go through what you had to go through I had to go through what I had to go through let's look at number three we want what God word requires it requires us to hearken to the voice and the word of God in Isaiah 51 and 1 it says hearken to me ye that follow after righteousness ye that seek the Lord look unto the rock whence ye are harmed and the whole of the pit whence ye are dead. God want us to hearken unto the voice of the Lord. Hearken unto the bath cold as we've been taught. Hearken unto the dreams. Hearken unto the visions. Hearken unto the man of God. Listen to what thus saying your pastor. Listen what thus saying the teachers. Listen what thus saying the ministers. You read your Bible and study your Bible and get in the presence of the Lord. Matthew 6, 33, and we're wrapping it up. We got a couple of more scriptures, and we're wrapping it up. Hallelujah, Lord. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Did you not say about seeking the Lord? Seek ye first his kingdom of God. The righteousness in you wants God's righteousness to be shared with others. If it's anything right in you, you're going to want them to know about the righteousness of Jesus as well. You're not just going to get it and keep it to yourself. That's why our church goes out and compel people to come in like Noah told the people it was going to rain because he was cut from another cloth. They did not believe Noah. They mocked Noah. Then they parted and jammed all night long. And when that rain began to come down and that flood took over, they was out there knocking, wanting to come in. I come to tell you tonight, it's going to be no room in the ark after a while because they're going to be knocking and want to come in and not going to be able to get in. But they better come in while they got a chance to get in. God is saying, get this thing right. And that's why, Sister Adams, you said, don't cry. I'm like in my heart. I'm crying every time. He's saying, get this thing right. Get this thing right. I'm going to tell you a testimony. And I want you to hear the Holy Ghost. And I got a couple more scriptures and I'm done. My first husband died. Hear me when I say this. I don't, I'm, I'm released from what people think. I've been released. That's why pastor called me the devil buster. I've been released, but I didn't know it. God let me know my first husband was going to die, first of all. Then he turned around and told me again that he wants to obey me now, but I don't want him to obey me now. That was in the same year that he died. So when he passed three months after I got that prophetic word, it was even described to me on what I was going to be wearing and what I was going to have on. But God called him home. Hear me when I tell you this out of my heart, soul, and spirit. He said he wants to obey me now, but I don't want him to obey me. I'm calling him home to rest. And I'm going to go back one more, and I'm done. And I got a couple of scriptures. 
When the Lord called me, I was shacking. When God called me in 1998, I was shacking. That's why I don't let no man, woman, boy, girl tell me about what God going to do. Pastor Kiner didn't even know that. Sister Adams didn't even know that. Sister Keisha didn't know that. But the power of God, because we're cut from another cloth. I would never meet another saint, old, young, black, white, rich, or poor, that'll tell me what God won't do. I know what God is able to do. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly above uh, all we could actually think according to the power that's working in us. But when God had called Eddie home, I was no longer in Eddie's life. Eddie died with full-blown AIDS. Do you hear me on tonight? I got two kids by Eddie. But for the grace of God, I'm still standing here tonight. I'm able to breathe tonight. I'm able to see you all tonight. Able to go to the new land that God allow us to purchase through the church, through Pastor Kina. What are you saying tonight? He's saying in the word that the thief cometh not. But for to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I am come that that might have life and that they may have it more abundantly. The word of God tells us, beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Try the spirit by the spirit. Don't be tricked by the devil. Don't be bamboozled by the devil. Don't be dealing with the devil. Don't be loving the devil. Don't sleep with the devil. Don't feed the devil. The devil got to get saved in the name of Jesus or go to the pits of hell. And we know Satan, Lucifer, is not going to be saved. He had his chance. Pray my strength in the Lord because you've been cut from another cloth. Put your hands together for the Lord on tonight. When you've been cut from another cloth as they make their way to this altar, you're not going to mock Christ. You're not going to try to tempt Christ. And you're not going to deny Christ as Peter denied Christ. 